Hey guys, International Stacker here, and I feel like I'm a broken record. Inflation in August was insane. September, 5.4%, and that's quicker than the 5.3 in August. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a cliff. Are you prepared? Let's go. One Stacker. Journey to find silver. International Stacker. What's up, guys? International Stacker back here again, and thank you all for tuning into this video. Today is going to be a, a crazy quick one. I'm going to make it quick, uh, but I'm going to show you some blaring warning signs that you should all be paying attention to. And if you really pay attention to, you can capitalize and do what we call arbitrage off of. Uh, but I want to thank you all for coming and joining. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, we're near that 30K mark. I'm on that march to 30K. So let's get there. And a lot of you who watch are actually not subscribed. Please hit the like, smash it, gently tap it, whatever you want to do. And put a comment below for that evil algorithm. And let's go ahead and jump into it. Real quick, too, I just want to shout out the sponsor of this video um which is altale mining so thank you altale okay this week's cpi numbers are atrocious 5.4 percent if you look at the minutes from the federal reserve um in, in their meeting they had uh to me it blares and it's screaming that what they've been saying for months now is not true they've been saying it's transitory inflation so inflation simply means prices are going up for the same thing right so you have one ounce of a one ounce avocado today it's 99 cents next month it's a uh, dollar 98 well there you go it, that was a hundred percent inflation okay so that's a very simple example um, but anyways prices are getting more expensive on things thus inflation is increasing and what do i call this ladies and gentlemen i call this the hidden tax the hidden tax it's a way that your buying power is taken away from you and you don't even know it you look in the bank, it's a hundred bucks. You look in the bank the next year, it's a hundred bucks, but it's the buying power of say $94, and then so on and so forth. And it continually compounds by the way, each month. It's not just that simple. So why are we in this problem to where um, inflation is out of control? Uh, it's looking like it's not transitory. Well, it's right here. This is called the M2 money supply. And it's interesting. If you look back here in 1971, what happened here, ladies and gentlemen? This is when we went off the gold standard in 1971. And you could see the money quickly started to be printed and printed. Now, when the currency, I shouldn't even say money, when the currency is tied to gold and silver, you it's very hard to deficit spend. It can still happen, but it's very hard. So it keeps it more under control if you see that. But ever since that, it's been gradually increasing, increasing. And as we move further away and inflation increases and the buying power of the dollar drops even more, you guys should go check out Mike Maloney's Hidden Secrets of Money. Look at the death nails of the dollar. It gets more and more extreme. And look at this exponential growth. This is a lot like a hockey stick, guys. That's a hockey stick. If this was a stock or silver or gold, we'd be rejoicing right now. A majority of the money supply, I mean, what is that, 20 30%? There's probably 20 or 30 percent of the money supply has been printed into existence not even printed most of this is just digital money um since 2020 and look at that that was the pandemic covid can i say COVID? we're gonna still say beer flu around here and it's gone exponential do you guys remember at the beginning of covid when i was warning you go out and prepare right now i'm gonna admit it i did not see foresee the great uh toilet paper shortage of 2020 um but i did make a funny video called my toilet paper full stack go watch that one it's funny uh, but i talked a little bit about the situation back then but look shelves are going bare again all across the united states some places it's really bad some places it's not and a lot of the stores i've been to are not but you might see full shelves but if you look back there's only like one or two or three items deep it's not all the way to the back um, I've also seen pictures where like Home Depot or someone just filled in a bunch of shelves with buckets just to make the shelves look full. We're having major supply chain issues. A lot of it is a result of what happened. You can't lock down society, you know, for over a year and expect things to immediately return back to normal. So what does that mean to us? That means we need to be prepared. You know, I've said it a million times. 
You need to be resilient and self-sufficient. Even FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, says that you should be prepared. You should have enough emergency food. Some documents say 72 hours, some say a week, and there's even some that say up to three weeks, but you should be prepared. If there was a, a major food shortage, isn't that peace of mind just fantastic? So I recommend getting the freeze-dried food, and I'm going to hashtag shameless plug. Go to preparewithis.com. Cheapest emergency foods you're going to find online. You put it in a closet. You put it under your bed. Forget about it. It's good for 25 years, and it's delicious. I have a video of little children eating it, okay? Um, so check that out. But I did also want to talk about a few other things. One, you all know that I had to sell a monster box of eagles. Um, going into beer flu because I had a contract fall through because of that. So that sucked. Um, and I took me under 6,000 ounces. Well, I'm happy to report I'm now again back over 6,000 ounces. And that was a major goal. Uh, gold, I need to check. I think gold, I'm uh, around 14 ounces. So I'm still stacking silver. And I just put out a video yesterday of this epic LCS in Detroit. Go check it out. I got a few more coming. I got a bunch of really cool content coming um, that I think you're all going to like. Um, but I'm starting to focus, I think, a little bit more on gold now just because I have so much silver. Um, but you all know me, I'm always looking for opportunities for investment. And I do think, and I've said a million times, gold and silver are not investments. I don't look at them as investments. I look at them as a hedge against inflation, a way to preserve your buying power, preserve your wealth, um, and get your money through to the other side should some bad scenario, SHTNF situation or whatever happen, okay? Um, and also to silver and gold physical, I believe are a long play. Now, I think there's opportunities in the gold and specifically silver market now that might end up ge generating a, a bunch of revenue for myself. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my personal opinions. Okay. Look at my disclaimer description below, but I do think there's huge opportunities to be had. And if I think there's huge opportunities to be had in the physical and gold market, well, where do they come from the miners? So this is another add on to my series of looking for the best investments. And a lot of my calls over the past, couple months i've looked at six or seven companies i believe um have been pretty dead on a lot of them have done well so this company got on my radar recently from an article i was reading and i was able to uncover a little intelligence and this is altalay mining now i'm going to make this very quick and run down what interested me in this now you know i always look at the team of people and the same crew that built Endeavor Financial um, is also the same crew. crew um, and by the way, Endeavor Financial is one of the most important mining groups uh, in the world. OK, same crew that started that started this company. OK, or I, I, I shouldn't say start. They run the company. Now, there's two current projects, um, which is exciting. Um, the first one is this project here, and it's a primarily a zinc project. Uh, project, but they do have gold there. It's down here in Mexico. Um, but it's actually, they're actually operating what some say is the sixth largest zinc mine in Mexico. And zinc is actually in a major bull market. Why do I care about zinc? I don't really care about zinc. You know me, I'm a gold silver um, guy. And you know me, people ask me about platinum plate. I don't, I don't know. I'll get into that later. Um, but this mine is generating over $2 million monthly um, and that's earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Okay, so that's important to know. But their cap is $110 million. So if you look at this chart over six months, we are at a low, which is why I'm excited. And even yesterday, it's down 1.49%. But it's at $0.34. Cents. $0.34. Cents. This to me reminds me of like, I just, okay, I got a bunch of... Uh, ship coin okay shiba inu it's a total meme coin don't do it i'm just messing around with it um but i did it because it was so cheap so look 34 cents i mean you can get three shares for a dollar which is awesome but why am i so excited about this it went down a little bit blah 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 that's because a new project so this is their producing mine the campo uh, moreto and this is their new one and i, I forget how to say this it's like talueto or something like that any of my Spanish speakers, let me know. But this is in Mexico. Um, this is probably four months from opening. And I believe it has uh, like tw it has the capability of producing, I think, 25,000 ounces a month. And this is primarily a gold and silver mine. 
whereas the other one is primarily um, zinc. Okay, so the thing that excites me about this is it's a great entry point in my opinion because we're at a low, and they have this mine project that's going to be coming online in the next few months. To me, this is a no-brainer uh, entry point. Now, uh, this mine, uh, it's already got its permits uh, and is in construction right at this time. And again, in four months, probably going to be done. The addition of this mining project doubles the metal sales. Okay, this will double the metal sales for the company. So it's at 34 cents. This is going to double, relatively, the metal sales for the company. Breakdown of this uh, mine is uh, it's 69% uh, gold. 12% silver and 19% other base metals. And over the first four years of operations, it's forecast to add at approximately 30,000 ounces of annual gold production plus silver and base metals. I mean, base metals are needed for some things. To me, this is an extremely pivotal point for this company because they have one very successful project and they're about to go to two. And I believe this pivotal point is gonna attract people into the company. Um, it's all in sustaining cost is 808 ounces uh, or 808 dollars per ounce. So that's super low. So what we're at like 1800 with spot price 1750 1800. So that's over a thousand dollars an ounce profit. So to me, when we pull this up, to me, my personal opinion, this is very cheap. We're at a pivotal point in the next couple of months where they're going to have nearly a doubling in their production, and it's time for the intelligence. So when you look at the current stakeholders, you see Ascendo Banco, you see Antares Capital Management, and both these institutional uh, strategic shareholder groups have deep ties to the Mexican government and decision makers. So you know with any mining project uh, in the world, you need to be careful and do your due diligence and research because if it's in South America or Africa or even anywhere, um, if the government's against it or the government decides to put up roadblocks, it can slow, it can stop projects. So the fact that some of the biggest shareholders have deep ties with the Mexican government, to me, is paving the way for successful growth. Okay, And it makes it a much safer play, you know, safer. The whole thing here is about mitigating risk. So again, this project's, uh, again, I don't know how to say that. Someone better please teach me. Four months away. And... The management for this company has built multiple billion dollar plus companies um, and is eyeing a shopping spree in Mexico. So um, I like to call it mind flippers. So their plan is literally um, to go to mines that are not doing well, not producing well, not run properly um, all across Mexico and flip them. So build them up, get them profitable and flip them. Okay. Um, so maybe we'll make a TV show called Mind Flippers and I can be the host on this mine. And then, <laughs> and then the Mind Flippers come in. They're going to like yell at people. Why are you drilling with these bitch? You got to I love Bar Rescue, by the way. If any of you guys ever watch Bar Rescue, that's kind of what I'm memeing there. But I don't know. Let me know in the description or let me know in the comments what you think below. Um, one, I want to know if you guys have done any of the plays I've shown. And two, what you think about this company. Um, I am very interested in this. 34 cents entry point. We're at a low in the history um, of it, which to me is a fantastic buying point. I mean, look at here. Okay. It's high was 73 cents. Okay. And we're at 34 and they're going to double production. So that has a huge opportunity for growth there. Okay. What's this? Oh, I pulled this up. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. So here's the structure at Tahuheto. Tahuheto? I'm saying like Arabic style. Um, so that's a mineral processing facility. Very cool. And then this is the Campo Morado uh, mine. So a lot of stuff goes into this, guys. Let's see here. Shares, outstanding. Anyways, let me know what you guys think below. Check them out. And I guess I'll say, catch you on the next one. Woo! 30,000, let's do it. One stacker journey.